Senator, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for being good here. You saw the op-ed, and I know that you are also meeting with Jay Powell this afternoon. What are you planning to talk about? Is your meeting after the president or before, or how does that work? It you know, I'm not really sure when it is, Maria. This is a meeting that uh, Chairman Powell lined up with me. He called and asked to, to visit. Of course, I'm I'm home in North Dakota over the Memorial Day weekend. So uh, I intend to visit with him a little bit about, you know, the, the plans for, uh, you know, raising rates and, and shrinking the balance sheet a little bit. And, and uh, Chairman Powell has always been very forthcoming with me about that. And uh, I'm, I'm just interested. Obviously, uh, he and I disagreed over much of last year because I felt like the Fed should have started this process much sooner and had a much more gradual, uh, you know, uh, sort of a path to to uh, shrinking. But um, anyway, they're doing what they need to do now. I'm just afraid the pain is going to have to be a little bit greater. I mean, what can they do at this point, Senator? I mean, look, yeah. the president is out with this op-ed today saying that he's got a plan. Right. And he's also saying that we're in the most robust recovery in history. I don't know how you come up with those words, given the fact that we just saw the economy shrink. We had a contraction in the first quarter. Right. We get another contraction in the second quarter. We're officially in recession. And this morning, oil prices are surging again. So you've got this elevated inflation happening, and you've got a president saying that he's got a plan to curtail it. What can he do? Well, first thing he could do is just lift all of his regulatory craziness. You know, his first day in office, he signed several regulations and uh, executive orders, undid many of the good uh, executive orders that President Trump had put in place. He also said in his op-ed that he inherited a, st a, a very uh, bad economy, that it was very static. Well, the reality is he inherited a robust economy built on a strong foundation, built on lower regulations, lower taxes. And, and the reason we were able to come back so quickly after COVID was because of the foundation that was built by the Trump administration and Republicans in Congress prior to the pandemic. He, he instead of seeing that, he, he doubled down on dumb, passed the American Rescue Plan with all just Democratic support, adding $2 trillion of fuel to the fires of inflation. He increased regulations, you know, stopped oil development largely in the United States of America, or at least stopped it where it was. And, and worse than all yeah. of that, Maria, I think all of these things, plus many more, send bad signals to investors and into the marketplace. So while he talks a little bit out of one side of his mouth about wanting to, you know, to incentivize um, energy development, he, he, when he talks about energy development, he wants, to, you know, to, to um, have tax incentives for clean energy, for electric vehicles. All the while, the world is crying for more of what we produce in oil and gas and, and other energy sources. So everything he does sends the wrong messages. Well, it's interesting because this is all about messaging. And Politico is reporting this morning right. that the president is kicking off this month-long campaign. Uh, and he's going to have lots of his surrogates out and about talking about how great this economy is and how he's meeting with Powell to try to get his hands on inflation as if he's totally detached from the problem. And we know that the underlying issue is oil. Uh, we've got news this morning of the European Union uh, banning Russian oil imports partially. China reportedly lifting some COVID restrictions. Oil prices are jumping this morning. You've got Brent at uh, 123.83, up three and two thirds percent. Crude oil at us at 118.73. That's up better than three percent right now as gasoline prices are at a new record high this morning. Uh, AAA tells us that the national average for regular gasoline is now at four dollars sixty two cents a gallon, Senator. So. The president is going to begin this new campaign, a month-long campaign, where he's going to write op-eds, send surrogates out there telling us how great the economy is a few months before the midterm elections so that, I guess, voters go to the polls thinking that maybe it's not the Democrats' fault. Maybe it's not Joe Biden's well, fault that we're seeing yeah. uh, inflation where it is, despite on day one him canceling all the energy independence that we had. Yeah, the problem is he's got a really bad message, Maria. So he, he can send all of the surrogates he wants out there. He can he can have an aggressive campaign. He can scream it louder if he wants, but screaming it louder doesn't make it a good message. It's a really bad message. And the, his problem is his political his political numbers are irredeemable. They, they may go up or down a little bit within a small range, but people know every time they fill their their car, they know every time they go shopping, they know every time uh, you know they, they look for a, a used car or or want to you know buy a new home. 
home or build a new home. They know what's happening. The, the, the American people yeah. are not dumb, and he's counting on them to be dumb. I, I'm not sure he knows exactly what's going on. He clearly has a bad philosophy, but he got to have enough political sense to, r r rather than just scream louder what a bad idea you have, how about you correct course? You know, that, that would be a better idea if you'd correct course, um, lift regulations, right. lower taxes, um, incentivize people well, that, that, to, uh, yeah. to work. That, that is a, a concern, I think. The fact that there's this tin ear that he's unwilling to acknowledge what all of the spending has done uh, from the Democrats. But look, you're meeting with Jay Powell today, Senator. Are you going to tell him to ease up on the rate hikes? What are you going to advise Jay Powell? Yeah, it, he's already told yeah. us to expect a half a point hike in June and a half a point hike in July. Right. Right. So, so Maria, I, I'm not, I'm not a banker. I'm not a. I don't even have much of a finance background. But I do know this much: that when you put um, one bad thing on top of several other bad things, you're just going to have a lot more bad things. Like I said, my my concern with the Fed was always that they didn't start soon enough with modest differences that would actually, you know, have a have a much less painful response. Clearly, we are we have an overcharged economy in the sense that we have much greater demand than we have uh, supply. And uh, I just don't know if if raising rates now on, on a market crash that's, re that's reading the tea leaves um, is really going to be the answer. But uh, I'm going to leave that to the experts and, and listen to what he has to say. And you know, I'll give my two cents worth. But uh, again, I, I, you know, I wish they would have started sooner, more modestly. Yeah, well, they got a $9 trillion balance sheet. Senator, real quick before you go, right. we only have 20 seconds here, but what are your thoughts in terms of what the Democrats are going to do in terms of policy? Are we going to see a further push to get through Build Back Better? I'm afraid we are right now, and, and I don't, again, it's an irredeemable political situation. I think they've resigned themselves to the fact that they are not going okay. to win, and they just want to do all the damage they can do in the meantime. Senator, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Always my pleasure. Thanks, Maria.